Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello all, welcome to this lecture. So far, in all the lectures on rotational spectroscopy, we have discussed or focused on diatomic molecule whose bond is rigid. But now, we will relax that condition. But the question is, why would I need to relax that condition? This is because we know bonds are not rigid. We know molecules vibrate for instance, but what is going to happen to a molecule as it rotates faster and faster? Intuitively, we can say that the bond length will get longer and longer. But why would the bond length get longer as the molecule rotates faster? This is due to centrifugal distortion centrifugal distortion. But does this centrifugal distortion going to affect the rotational spectrum? To answer this, let us look into the real experimental data from carbon monoxide rotational spectrum. Here, the frequencies of each lines are given and in this last column, we have the frequency gap between the adjacent lines. We see that the gaps are steadily decreasing or rather we can say that the gaps are more rapidly decreasing as we go to higher and higher g. This happens because the bond length is changing. So, let us look into more details in another set of data obtained from the rotational spectrum of HF. Here also, we see the same trend in the frequencies and the frequency gaps between the all the lines. So, here we can see the separation between the successive lines change with J, because the apparent separation between two lines is given by 2 B, we can think that the rotational constant that is B is decreasing as J is increases or we can say the 2 B or B is decreasing as J increases. So, why is the energy difference? decreasing with increasing j, we can get some hint if we look into the last column which shows the internuclear distance. We can see a steady increase in the internuclear distance with increasing j. In other words, we can say that the molecule is not strictly rigid as we can see that the bond length increasing or the bond length increases with increasing j. Thus, a more accurate description of the diatomic molecules is to consider them as non-rigid rotors, such that the atoms are connected by a spring as the molecule rotates, the atoms experiences centrifugal force. So, the atoms I am showing here, the atoms are experiencing centrifugal force. And as the speed of the rotation increases, that is as the value of j increases, the nuclei are thrown outwards by a larger centrifugal force increase in the bond length at higher j levels due to the centrifugal force 
results in the decrease of b or the rotational constant because we know that if the bond length is larger and we know the moment of inertia is proportional to the square of the internuclear distance. So, as the internuclear distance increases, the moment of inertia increases. And as the moment of inertia is inversely proportional to the rotational constant, that means as i increases, b becomes smaller. So, it is not surprising that the gap is getting smaller and smaller as j increases. This effect is known as, as I said before, this distortion is known as centrifugal distortion or centrifugal effect. So, qualitatively we can think that the bond length depends on which rotational level the molecule is in. This is because the chemical bond is elastic. The chemical bonds are not rigid. As the j value increases, the molecule rotates faster and faster. The nuclear experiences the centrifugal force that stretches the bond. So, we can say the centrifugal forces distort the molecule stretching the bond length. So, we have to improve our model by taking into account this effect of centrifugal distortion. Thus, for a non-rigid rotor, the energy expression that is nu bar j is given by b times j times j plus 1 and we have an extra term that is minus d times j times j plus 1 squared, where this d is called the centrifugal constant. So, let us try to understand the origin of this equation using a simple approach on the basis of classical behavior. We have discussed before that we can consider a diatomic molecule, let us say m 1 and m 2 rotating about the center of mass. So, this is the center of mass and this diatomic molecule is rotating. So, we can consider this molecule rotating with an angular velocity omega as a single particle of reduced mass mu rotating with angular velocity omega. So, let us assume that when there is no rotation, the particle is at a distance say r 0 from the center of mass and the distance increases to r when the particle rotates. So, the centrifugal force which is denoted by f c is given by mu v squared by r and as we know that omega equals v by r. So, we can write f c as mu omega square r. So, this force the centrifugal force or F c is balanced by a restoring force which we will write as F r and this restoring force is given by k times r minus r 0. So, here this k is not the Boltzmann constant, but this is the force constant. So, this is the force constant of the bond or the spring connecting the two nuclei of the diatomic molecule. So, because F c is counterbalanced by F r, 
we can write f c equals f r. In other words, we can write mu omega square r equals k r minus r 0. So, if we put all the terms with r on the left hand side, we can write k r minus mu omega square r equals k r 0 or we can write r equals k r 0 divided by k minus mu omega square. So, we can write r equals k r 0 divided by k minus mu omega square. So, we can see from this equation that as the angular velocity increases, that means as the molecule goes to higher and higher j levels, then k minus mu omega square decreases. So, this k minus mu omega square is in the denominator. So, the internuclear distance or r increases. So, the total energy of the molecule is the sum we can write energy is the sum of the kinetic energy plus potential energy. So, the kinetic energy as we have discussed before is given by half i omega squared where i is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular velocity. Now, the potential energy is given by half k r minus r 0 squared. So, because we had mu omega squared r equals k r minus r 0, we can actually write r minus r 0 equals mu omega square r divided by k. So, if we replace the r minus r 0 with mu omega square r by k, what we get? We can write this as half i omega squared plus half k and r minus r 0 squared I can write as mu squared omega to the power 4 r squared by k squared. So, we can even simplify this. We can write this equals half i omega squared and the next term we can simplify as half i omega squared whole squared divided by k r squared. So, this I can write in terms of angular momentum as L squared divided by 2 i which we already know plus L to the power 4 divided by 2 i squared k r squared. So, the quantum restriction that L is quantized that means, L is given by root over j times j plus 1 h cross. So, this quantum restriction will convert this classical result to a quantum mechanical result. So, if we replace L equals root over j times j plus 1 h cross into this expression, then we can write E equals h squared by 8 pi square i j times j plus 1. So, we know this part from previous lecture plus we can write h to the power 4 by 32 pi to the power 4 i squared k r squared j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, this energy is in joules. So, if we express this E or E j in terms of wave numbers, we can write 
nu bar j equals E j divided by H c. So, that becomes as we already know the first terms becomes B times j plus j plus 1 and the second term now becomes H cubed by 32 pi to the power 4 i squared k r squared c j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, this expression apparently looks like the equation due to centrifugal distortion. However, there is a sign mismatch. In the centrifugal distortion expression, we have a negative sign. Though we have j into j plus 1 and j times j plus 1 whole square terms, here also we have similar terms, but we have a positive sign. So, now we should remember that this r, this r is the extended bond length due to the centrifugal force. On the other hand, we have obtained this B from the rigid rotor with bond length R 0. As R and R 0 are related, we can express this equation in terms of R 0 instead of expressing it in terms of R. And for this, we will take another approximation. So, if we look carefully in this equation, this first term because it is inversely proportional to i and we know that i is mu r squared. So, this is proportional to r to the power minus 2. The second term is proportional to here we have at i squared. So, it is r to the power minus 4 and here we have another r to the power minus 2 term. So, it is proportional to r to the power minus 6. So, as we have seen from the previous table that the centrifugal distortion changes the bond length only by a small amount. So, for the second term we will just replace this r with r 0. So, if we do all the mathematical steps what we get is nu bar equals b times j times j plus 1 and the next term is the same just it becomes negative. So, it will be h cubed by 32 pi to the power 4 i squared k r 0 squared c j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, now we can even expand the moment of inertia. So, we will write this as B times J times J plus 1 minus H cubed and 32 pi to the power 4, then mu to the power 2 k r 0 to the power 6 c j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, this second term, so the second term can be further simplified and this further simplification gives the second term as 4 b cubed by nu bar square and we have the j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, we can write the second term as 4 b cubed by nu bar square times j times j plus 1 whole squared. Here as we know b is given by h by 8 pi square i c and nu bar is the vibrational term and that is given by 
1 by 2 pi c root over k by mu, where k is the force constant and mu is the reduced mass. So, we can see by comparing the non rigid rotor energy expression with the final expression that you have got, we can write d equals 4 b cubed by nu bar squared. So, this d is always a positive number as all the terms related to d that is 4 b and nu bar are positive numbers. This says that with increase in j, there is a decrease in the energy gap as we have seen earlier from the tables. Thus, we can think about an effective b or we can write. So, let us say we wrote nu bar j equals b times j times j plus 1 minus d times j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, if I take j times j plus 1 common, what I have here is b minus d times j times j plus 1. So, we can compare this with the rigid rotor, where we have nu bar j equals b times j times j plus 1. So, we can think this b minus d times j times j plus 1 as the effective b or we can write b effective equals b minus d j times j plus 1. So, as b effective is a function of j, b effective decreases as j increases. The value of d is significantly less than the value of b. For example, we have already discussed the value of b is in the order of 10 wave numbers. So, the value of d is around 10 to the power minus 3 wave numbers. So, that means, this is orders of magnitude smaller. So, as this value of d is significantly less than the value of b, thus the difference between the rigid and non rigid rotor treatments can be expected to show up only when the value of j or the high value of j is involved. So, we have talked about the energy expression. So, the expression for the rotational transition based on the selection rule delta j equals plus minus 1, we can write delta and we are considering a transition from j to j plus 1. So, we can write this delta nu bar j equals nu bar j plus 1 minus nu bar j and we will consider the non rigid rotor. So, we can write this as b times j plus 2 times j plus 1 minus d times j plus 1 times j plus 2 squared. So, this is for nu bar j plus 1 and for nu bar j as we already know we will write b times j times j plus 1 minus d times j times j plus 1 whole squared. So, if we put all the terms with b together what we have we have b and we will also take j plus 1 common. So, we have j plus 2 minus j. So, if we do the same for the terms with d what we have we have minus d and here we will take 
j plus 1 squared common. So, what we have here is j plus 2 squared minus j squared. So, this is like a squared minus b squared. So, we know a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So, we can write this as 2 because this j and j will cancel b times j plus 1 and this is the part we already know from the rigid rotor and the other part is d times j plus 1 squared and we have j plus 2 minus j and j plus 2 plus j. So, we can write this as 2 b times j plus 1 minus d j plus 1 squared. Then I have 2 times 2 j plus 2. So, this is 2 b j plus 1 minus d j plus 1 squared times 4 times j plus 1. So, we can write this as the final form delta nu bar j equals 2 b times j plus 1. This is for the rigid rotor and for the non rigid rotor we have an extra term that is minus 4 d times j plus 1 cube. So, we can see that the spectrum of the non rigid rotor is similar to that of the rigid rotor except each line is slightly displaced to a lower frequency and the displacement increases with j plus 1 cubed. So, displacement actually increases as the value of j increases. A knowledge of d gives two useful information. First, it allows us to determine the value of j of lines in the observed experimental spectrum. We should not measure an isolated transition or an isolated line to determine which j value it arises from, but we have to measure three consecutive lines to get these unique values of three variables b, d and j. So, for example, the data that we had shown for HF in the previous table can be fitted to some number times j plus 1 and some other number times j plus 1 cubed. So, if we compare this equation with this equation, we can immediately write b equals 41.122 divided by 2 that is 20.561 wave numbers and d equals 0 0.00852 divided by 4 that is 0 0.00213. Now, the second thing it gives is the knowledge of d enables us to very roughly estimate the vibrational frequency nu bar of the diatomic molecule, because we know d is given by 4 b cubed by nu bar squared. So, from here we can write nu bar squared equals 4 b cubed by d or in other words we can write nu bar equals 4 b cubed by d square root of the entire thing. So, now if we put the values that we have obtained for b and d in this expression, we find nu bar equals root over 4 times the value of b that is 20.561 cubed divided by the value of d that is 0 0.00213 and if we do 
this calculation, we can estimate the new bar of H f to be around 4040 wave numbers. 